Hilotan 12 volt, 240 watt thermal electric cooler, Peltier semiconductor refrigeration cooling system, cold plate cooler with fan. Whew. That's a that's a mouthful. That's like a whole buffet of modified words. So we're gonna get into it. So today, this bad boy showed up on my porch, and you can see it's a little it's a little worse for wear. It looked like at one point it was in the shape of a box. Now it's like in the shape of a mush box. All right. So there's some interesting stuff on here. When you get the box, it'll say. Wuhan Shi Hubei, China. And it's got my name on it and all that good stuff, which I'll blurt out in the video. But look at this box, man. Have you ever seen a box from China? This mangle. So we'll hopefully we'll, we'll be okay with that. All right, so let's get into this. Okay, so I already popped it open, but I haven't unwrapped it. And so this box, man, look at this box. It's like, did they put any notes on here at all? that says it was something electronic and something fragile. Oh my God, this is terrible. All right, so there's some bubble wrap. Art Sire Exacto Knife, cut many times with, you can see the scars. Okay, so here it goes. I waited almost four weeks for this thing to come. It came a lot sooner than it said it was gonna come. Uh-oh, all right, I can see there's a problem right there. The sucker got cracked on shipping. So that's gonna be an issue with that fan. Um, all right, but here it is. This is the Peltier device. So what's interesting about this is it's got little screws on it. And it looks like there's a plate here with a sticker. I'm gonna just go through some of the images. So in the images, it actually does have uh, a picture of this thing with screws coming through. And so it's got some cables. It looks like these are powered for the, for the fans. And what's interesting is that the, the way this is attached, the fan is just not really that on there that good. Oh yeah, this one's just hanging off here. Um, you know, this for the price, it says $83.99. For the price, I was, I was actually pretty amazed how cheap this was. But then, looking at it more closely, I'm not surprised. Nope. There you go. Yeah. Nope. There you go. Yeah. Buyer beware. ridiculous box, that ridiculous package. And what I realized was that for about $90, I shouldn't expect too much. Um, I didn't build it myself. And I shouldn't expect a crazy amount of quality coming from China. So what I did today uh, was I, I put together the whole unit, including the power supply. And I did some modifications here. You can see there are some slight raised areas that I had to manually grind away. So now they are ground smooth. And I did that so that I could put some film here and put my laptop on top of this and cool off my laptop. Okay, so what you're looking at is the wires on this unit are kind of short relative to a power supply. So there's the power supply. It is S25012, DC output 12 volt, 20 amp. And there's a little volt adjuster, just not screw there, you can barely see it maybe, on the far right. And I wired this up with the ground. The blue wire is the line, the brown wire is the neutral. And I put it, two fans and two Peltiers on the com on the left and all the line pluses are the hot lines on the two left to V pluses. So I consulted with my friend Mike at work 
and he gave me some input on how to wire this because I wasn't familiar with any of this. And so what you're looking at is when you get this thing and when you get this power supply, um, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get this kind of mess of parts. So I have to figure out a way to contain this or box it a little differently. And, and I, I think what I'm going to do is set it up so this can stand vertically um, so that the wires can sort of be loose like this and then box it in so that I can't shock myself by accident with the uh, any kind of fluids. Um, so this is a little bit of a, of a hazard right now, but let's just say that I tested it out and I gotta tell you guys, this thing is cold. Now I'm gonna get, I haven't ordered it yet, but I'm going to get a sensor that's gonna read the temperature of the surface of this and modulate the temperature. Uh, I think it's like a, an egg warming cooling device or a measuring device for um, like eggs in a hen house kind of thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in between the laptop and this surface to try to measure the temperature but also control it. Okay, so now this unit, this um particular power supply that I ordered. Here's the box for it. And it says on here, over output over voltage protection, over current protection, short circuit protection, surge protection, which means there's a fuse somewhere on that panel. Input 100 to 240, 50 to 60 hertz, and then it has an indicator that says that it's working. Now, it didn't actually come with any instructions at all, so you have to go online and find that one out. But I'll list, I'll list the description of the product with this Alito A Light of Love, which is nice. And this is the, came with two of these, but it, it was included in the order uh, for this power supply. Or, you know what, now that I think about it, I think I had to order them separate. But anyway, um, usually when you order this stuff from Amazon, there's like a suggested, hey, you probably want to buy these cords too. So this came with one of these. Typical, it says 10 amp. Should really be a, a 15 amp, but this is a 10 amp. 250 volt rated cable. Okay. So what we got going on here is we've got the max fan control 1.411. Uh, shout out to iPhone for putting that on this video. All right, so we're gonna open up a project in Premiere, and I'm not gonna do all the little detail stuff that that iPhone talks about. Uh, but what we're gonna do is open up a project. and test it out. Make sure you guys can see that there. So you can see the laptop is sitting right on top of where the heat source is, which is essentially the battery and where the fans are. And it's, it's getting warm, I can feel it. So what we're gonna try to do is put this right in the middle of that, just like that. Okay, so right now it says these fans are at 26, 26 and 2400. And then I'm going to, well, there's an error here. Now, if you, if you play with these fans, they're liable to break. So I don't recommend going full throttle with the fans. Um, I recommend going at least 100 RPM slower than they're willing to go. So here it says constant RPM value for the left side fan. So what we're gonna do, all right, so right now the fans are set at, the top one is 55.5, 5555. And the bottom one is 5468. So they're not completely maxed out, but they're real close. And that's about as much as I'm willing to go. Okay, so if I look down at my video, it says time remaining 55 minutes 39 seconds. And it looks like it's going about as fast as it was going before. It's jumping a little quicker. I can see the things jumping just a little bit quicker. But now I'm gonna plug in the cooling fan and see what happens. Now I'm just, just for a gut check, I'm gonna check and see how temperature 
It's not too hot right now, but I can tell you when these fans are going, it's gonna get hot. All right, so let me plug this bad boy in and see what happens. Luckily, I have a line voltage conditioner, and so we should have a nice clean current power this thing. Which has a ground fault, but that's okay. Okay, so now the power supply is on, the fans on the unit are running. They're not putting any heat out yet. But it takes a minute for this Peltier device to actually kick in. So it's still just neutral temperature on top of here. Okay, so after these tests were done, laptop's back on the cradle. This is all done. I unplugged it, it's still going good. So after a couple stress tests, it seems to be in fairly good working order. I, I played around with the voltage meter a little bit during this test and I figured out that uh, if I turn the, the screw set, there's a little screw that's set in there, if I turn it all the way to the full clockwise position, which would be all the way to the right, it goes as fast as it can go. If I turn it to the left, counterclockwise to the full left position, it uh, slows it down. And what I noticed is the temperature was a little different at, at first touch with full on versus full off, or full um, throttled. Or I don't want to say that. The lowest position to the highest position. It was a big temperature difference. Enough to be able to feel it with your hand. It wasn't uncomfortable to leave my hand in that position. Um, I'll have to do a follow up to, to measure how exactly cold this gets. I think I read the specs and it gets down pretty cold. Um, I don't think it goes down to minus 40 C. But let's just say that it, excuse me, is cold enough for this purpose. So, so when I was doing this, this little guy right here, I was looking at the values of in Fahrenheit of the CPU cores. Now right now they say they're hovering around 129, 130. And the CPU PECI, which is the environmental control, was hovering around, it, right now it's 134. During, during the tests, it was running, hovering around 170 to 200. It would go up and down and spike. Uh, I think the highest it got at any point was 210, and that was with the cooler going. So I did a follow-up and turned all the stuff off and just ran its normal cycle. And through, through me encoder, I got the log here. The log says, the first time I did it, it took uh, 64 minutes to complete its cycle. Uh, the second time I did it, log. okay, so the second test, the second test uh, time elapsed was one hour and 30 minutes. So that's a significant amount of time, 30 minutes uh, one hour, 30 minutes, basically. And so what I have to say is, for the amount of money that I spent on this, which was right around $100, maybe a little bit more, um, I essentially have a way to speed up my computational video processing with Adobe Premiere by as much as a third, um, using not only the fan controller, but the Max Fan Control 1.4.11, but also uh, the Peltier cooling device. And you know, I, when I was doing this, I noticed, I kept putting my hand here and testing things and screwing around a little bit. And what I noticed was that um, when it gets to the really, really heavy computational stuff, where it's doing multiple stacks of information all at once, um, it seems to help to have something that will cool down the device enough to allow those computations to happen just a little bit quicker. So I'm gonna do more tests. I'm gonna try some different things. I'm also gonna try um, maybe swapping out the Peltier devices that are on this board 
uh, and, and maybe even changing out the, the piece of aluminum that's here. I want to see if I can get a bigger piece of aluminum that's almost the same size as the back of my case. And I want to try taking the case off of the MacBook Pro and connecting it directly to this platter to see if that makes any significant difference in the time. And then I'll probably do some more tests based on the video that we're shooting now. So in summary, I'm gonna say that despite the initial quality problems of this device, and despite the initial kind of screwed up packaging, uh, it does seem to offer a significant benefit to processing time when chunking video frames on an older 2011 MacBook Pro for a moderate amount. Well, I would say a, a small amount, relatively speaking. A brand new MacBook Pro um, with eight cores is gonna run about $25 to $3,500 with a small amount of RAM. And I only spent maybe $120 on this total, maybe less than that, somewhere between $100 and $120. And that's, a, that's like a fraction of that expense to get a new, new machine. So if you have a MacBook Pro and you're still trying to squeeze as much as you can out of it, this device might be a good option for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.